Cool. So we're the Risk Five. Hi. Hey, welcome to Risk Five. It's great to have you here again, Charbox. How are you doing? Cool. So um, it's nice to see people again, right? Definitely. Two years nothing, and now we are back on the embedded world. It's great, and a lot of people coming. Everyone kind of happy to come here, and great to see you again. We didn't see each other two years. Yeah. Uh, what are you sh holding there? You had that one. That is a module from Aris Embedded, and it has some Risk Five on it. A Risk Five chip from Renesas. So that's the RC5. It is a 32-bit Risk Five chip which can run an embedded Linux, an industrial-grade embedded Linux. You're seeing we are getting more and more general purpose with this Risk V. We are proud, happy that Core itself is from Andes Technology, a Taiwanese company making CPU IP, and now having some big tier one company like Renesas making a chip, making it available for everyone. Pretty cool. And you see, first modules already available, doing quite well. Uh, did the wall get bigger since two years ago? The wall? More logos? The wall keeps continuing. Look at this. Everything is continuing. More and more partners, Think Silicon, uh, Tactical Computer, Samsung, Tilink, <laughs> Tenstorrent with Jim Keller. That is just exploding. Everything is getting more and more big. So from our point of view, Risk Five is here and Risk Five is growing and getting more and more big. What do you think? Should I introduce you first the booth or do you want to have a look around with all the people? Yeah, let's go with, okay. with you. Let's go around. Cool. Then okay. maybe we start here. Yeah. That are the Risk V partner from Codasip. Codasip is also a CPU IP vendor. And maybe you want to say a few words about Codasip. Hey, so, please introduce yourself. Uh, Alexey Shokin, solutions engineer from Codasip Studio, and uh, we also uh, the partners with Risk V, and we provide uh, the IP cores and the software tools to develop uh, the CPU cores and to customize them. So all our customers uh, get the full architectural license with the studio tools so that they can do anything starting from the off-the-shelf uh, hardware-proven CPU cores. Nice. Uh, should we go to your neighbors? Uh, uh, right here. Hey, what should we check out next? All right. The guys from Syntacore already have left, unfortunately. Syntacore is also doing CPU IP, pretty cool company. So they have <coughs> flexible CPU, you can license it and also make your own chip with it. You just see this Risk Five environment is growing and growing and more, more and more vendors. The next one is Case, European company. Hey, Christian, can you talk about Hi. cases? Yes, sure. Well, Case is a company that has a number of capabilities, but what is interesting here is our group from Sweden, Geisler, and we do Risk Five IP, and we do this IP not only to license it to the community, but also we make with that IP our own products, our own standard products, and those are space-grade products. So those are processors uh, that are already flying around the world and around other planets. So that's what we do. You do space. Correct. We do <coughs> space. But what chips do you have in space right now? Arm right cores. Now, Right now we have our Leon cores in space, uh, there's different generations of Leon cores in different uh, um, components that we made and also in many components that our customers made that could be SPGAs or... What's the Leon? Basics. Leon is a Spark processor, that was, is the generation that we have been working with uh, before we started uh, doing RISC-V, right. which is the Noel And on which processor. planet we can find it? Uh, well, we can, we're in space on satellites? On satellites, we can find it turning, revolving around other planets such as the Jupiter uh, sometime soon, um, around the Sun as well. So um, a large part of the solar system already knows our processes. Nice. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the demo. Where can we you come closer to the microphone? Yeah, we are looking at a demo where we implement a dual core system on a Xilinx FPGA. On top of that, we run the uh, Fentis Xtratum hypervisor uh, uh, that spans a couple of different partitions uh, with different criticality. Uh, so we have really, we implement actually sort of a demonstration of a spacecraft system with different tasks that, that all can run on one high performance uh, onboard computer. Nice, cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Right. Let's have a look to the next guys. Greenwaves, a European company. 
They are unfortunately not here in the moment, but they have pretty innovative things. They are making a processor, it's called the GAP9, that is this small thing, this small silver thing. And what GAP9 does, it has a lot of risk processors inside, so there are many cores, there is an audio subsystem inside, and this GAP9 is really low power audio. And then some sample products is, for example, this. It's a people counter, an infrared people counter. You mount it on the wall. You only need to have power. All the processing is inside, so no data is going out. It only sends out 10 people in the room, five people in the room, all based on super low power risk five with a battery powered inside. And the interesting thing is it's very anonymous, so you don't have any data problems, and it's all produced in Europe. The guys from Green Waves have already a lot of products with Risk V and they keep growing it. So that is really some innovative company based in French with the headquarter. Definitely check it out. Cool. Let's have a look to the next booth. The next booth is the Open Hardware Group, which is helping to promote the Risk V architecture. And I would like to hand over to Rick O'Connor. Hey. Rick, do you have a moment for Let's Starbucks? Hi. We always have time. Hello. Tell us what you're doing with Open Hardware Group, man. Well, it's, it's super exciting, right? Open Hardware Group is a, an organization that is uh, made up of 88 members and partners across the industry developing open source RISC-V implementations. Right, so we have 11 different RISC-V cores in the roadmap. This week, we announced a development kit, the Core 5 MCU development kit. And the hardware emulation on an FPGA board right now, but it's being taped out in Global Foundry's 22 FDX. Will be available on a evaluation board later in the in the year uh, for for uh, edge connected IoT devices that have a low power but high compute requirement. So next to the uh, actual core is an embedded FPGA array where you can integrate all kinds of different accelerators for AI and ML right next to the core. And it's all built with Global Foundry's 22 FDX. Did you Very say exciting. 25? 22 FDX. 22 20. chips. Uh, how many chips designs you have lined up? Uh, there's 11 cores 11 currently cores. under development in the roadmap in the Core Five. That's roadmap. a lot of open source different cores. designs. That's a lot of different designs. That's that's very For true. All kinds of performance. All kinds of performance from two two stage deep pipeline, deeply embedded class cores to application class 64-bit SMP coherent clusters. So what's possible to do with RISC-V? What's the limit? What, how small can you go? It's how limitless. big can you go? Uh, it's limitless. I mean, the, instru the tiniest instruction set, the integer instruction set, is only 49 instructions. So you can have the tiniest core uh, that you can imagine. Smaller right up than into the Cortex-M0 Plus? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Small, no small one? Yes. To right, right up to out-of-order, uh, multi-issue, superscalar machines, if that's what you want to go try to build. Like an Intel Xeon? If that's what you have the capability and architectural knowledge on so how to build. It's not so easy to design, right? Well, no, I mean, it's not just the ISA. Having the ISA available is one thing. You need to be skilled in the art of microprocessor architecture to build a machine like that. So do you have a lot of skilled people in the industry joining the RISC-V and, and, and your company and everything? So this is a non-profit ecosystem. Yes, it's a company, but it's a non-profit ecosystem. We have 88 members and partners at the table. Uh, I guess so the short answer is, yeah, lots of very skilled people in the art, uh, but a very uh, very vibrant ecosystem of many members, members collaborating. And some very big company, like, is Intel involved also in this part? In, in open hardware, we have uh, companies like Alibaba, NXP, Silicon Labs, Talos, uh, Siemens, many large uh, corporations. Intel is not at the moment a member, uh, but obviously everybody is welcome to play. All right. Uh, so is it a good show to meet people? Is it interesting to see people again? It's obviously great to be out amongst the community talking to people. Nice. And what's the biggest secret the stuff that's happening in the future? Or is everything happening open and everybody knows the roadmap of what's happening? Well, for our organization, everything's in the public domain, so by definition, we have no secrets. Uh, that's the true nature of open source collaboration. Cool. All right. That's, uh, so how, how soon do we see all these 11 designs in actual products? Uh, well, the first ones are starting to emerge now, and, and the cores that have been, in, uh, have been frozen and uh, RTL freeze, what we call it, and ready for production, 
have been uh, uh, completed now for about a year, and they've, they're in products now. The challenge is they're used as deeply embedded cores within an SOC, no API exposed to the users, so you, nobody knows that they're in there. But uh, any modern SOC today has many, many cores that are just you know, firmware, if you will, embedded in the SOC. So they're in production currently. But did, did you say this was running on the FPGA? This is running on an FPGA emulation platform. So how soon until the chips? The first chip from the, from the open hardware ecosystem is later this year, built in 22 FDX. Cool. All right, awesome. Yeah. And do you go all the way down to like five nanometer, everything? Well, we, we only have access to whatever our fab partners want to expose, but so right now with Global, we'll build in 22 and 12 LP. Nice. But I'm, I'm sure we'll be sub 10 nanometer with somebody at some point. Is TSMC doing risk 5 stuff? All the foundries are. All the foundries are? Of course. They're all lined up. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank all right. you. Thanks so where do we go next? All right. Have a look to the next one. Venta Micro. Uh, interesting company. What they are making, they are bringing risk 5 on chiplets. So the guys are unfortunately not here, but the idea is to design a risk 5 put it on a chiplet and then sell you the chiplet. So you need a chip, you make a chip, you make your analog something, you take the chiplet, verified risk 5 you put it with your chiplet, put it together, and you have a working chip. And chiplets is a big thing in the future, so that is really an interesting approach, a new startup, and that's possible by risk 5 How many companies at the Embedded World are doing risk 5 stuff? Man, it's really hard to count. I would say there is at least 10, 15 percent doing risk 5 and a lot of people looking into risk 5 You have been asking before if Intel is also inside. Yes, Intel put a $1 billion fund for risk 5 on the edge. They are investing heavily in Spain for a lot of research, but they are also building up the foundry service. So Intel has partnered, for example, with Andes Technology, but also with Sci-5. And if you want to get your chip done by Intel, in the Intel Foundry system and you say, I need a CPU, they say, you can have Risk 5 and we have someone from Sci-5 or from Andes available. So Intel, I think, is also joining this trend and is also going very strong because one billion US dollar is a, lot, a lot of money to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of innovation that can be in, uh, funded yeah. there. Uh, how about all the stuff people come for here at the booth? What are they asking for? They're like getting stamps on these, and what does that do? So we have the stamps, you go around, you get a stamp from every of the partner companies being here, here and this code is Sci-5, and then you can win a dev board. So we have dev boards, that is from our partner WDH, it's a Chinese company, and they make a lot of interesting microcontroller, where you have USB to UART, but you also have a USB to microcontroller, so you plug it to an Ethernet or something, you have USB-C for programming or also for output, and that's our giveaway. So they also have risk 5 inside, of course, and that's where the people come. They get the stamps, they learn about risk 5 they see the ecosystem, how good it is, how big it is, and then they have the chance to win this dev board. Nice. And we just did half on the booth so far. We only did half. Let's go to the next one. Maybe you heard about the guys Ubuntu. Please tell us what you're doing with Risk 5 Yeah, my name is hey. Heinrich Schuchert. I'm working for Canonical. That's a company behind the Ubuntu Linux distribution. We have supported since last year running the desktop with GNOME or KDE on Risk 5 And currently we are looking into our IoT business. We are, can now build Snaps on Risk 5 And Snaps is what is used for Ubuntu Core which is our offering for having an operating system in the IoT world. And uh, next thing is also getting many more boards being supported inside uh, the RISC-V ecosystem, like the Vision 5 or the NASA board, and we plan to uh, offer images within the next two months. How good is uh, Ubuntu support on RISC-V? Yeah, if you, uh, for x86, uh, you find something like 67,000 uh, packages. There of 63,000 are already available for Risk Five. So, nice. Right. And how many on ARM? Uh, few more. A uh, few more. So ARM is just in the middle between x86 and Risk Five. Yes. All right. Cool. And uh, 
you the best Linux distribution on RISC-V? We, we are the one who are really officially supporting RISC-V. For some other distribution just have some downloads that you can get from a developer and not an official distribution. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, Jarbox, one thing. Have you been talking about Division 5? That is a board, it's like a Raspberry Pi, and you can have it today with a RISC-V on it. That's amazing. Operating system, Linux, of course, the Ubuntu from Canical, controlling a robot arm. So we are really here for industrial use. Let's have a look to the next guy. The next guy are from Digital Core. Digital Core is doing some great stuff hey. for the software. Hey, gentlemen, can you tell Jarbox what you're doing? Yeah. We are basically a design services company from India doing electronic product design services and this is the first RISC-V application for on IC which we have developed a system on module using this IC, the first of its kind and we have also developed a use case, a thermal imaging core using this uh, chip and the system on module which is displayed here. All right. We already did the video yesterday, yep. yeah. and uh, people can check it out yep. too. Sure. Show you the busiest corner of the booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Glad to be there. All right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So you, so you yeah. see, design systems. Everything is very important. But there are, like I said, more companies okay. doing Risk Five. Meet Andy from Sci Five. Andy, let us know what you're doing for Risk Five. Hey, Andy. What's up? Very, every, but RISC-V is changing the world, as, as everybody knows. Um, everyone loves open source, everyone lo loves RISC-V. Um, so we have a, a fantastic portfolio of products. Um, we're an IP licensing company. Um, everyone behind you is making fun of me now, it's great. Um, <laughs> but, so what do you want to know? Ask me some questions. Um, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you after a couple years of hiatus. It's really good to be I back in, in a better world, fire. actually. The, em the, the Embedded World Show is, 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 the, is our favorite show um, on the planet, right? Can you uh, describe a little bit Sci-5? Uh, it's actually big, bigger and bigger company. How, how many people in Sci-5? So Sci-5 is about 600 people at the moment. Uh, uh, we're, we're recruiting. We're just about to open a headquarters in Cambridge in the UK. Um, we're, we're massively investing in Cambridge in the UK. We're also investing in San Mateo in the Valley. So we're, quite, we're, we're trying to recruit um, um, engineers who are, who are looking to change the world with this five along with us. We have some really cool new technology. Um, we've, we're one of the first to go to market with um, RISC V vectors, the, um, the ratified version 1.0. And we have a product that is literally flying off the shelves. People can't get enough of it. And we, up, we did a, re, a new release of that this week. Um, so we've extended its capabilities. We've yeah. added World Guard Let's security. Check it out. Is it that board? So no, this, this is actually one of our uh, reference platforms. Um, these are very rare at the moment, they're very hard to get hold of, um, but um, we're working with Intel on releasing a new board uh, later, later this year. Um, it's going to be based on our P550 device. Um, so this is what um, people in the ecosystem have been using for a, a number of years now um, uh, to, you know, as part of their Linux porting efforts and uh, other open source software um, that we all love from the, um, from the, uh, the, 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 the Linux Foundation, etc. Are you working with the developers, the community? Uh, yeah, what's yeah, your so role? What so do you I, do? My role is outbound marketing. So um, um, I've been doing lots of material on what risk five vectors mean for the um, industry. And we've actually just created a dedicated page on our website um, under the technology section where we've got blogs and articles uh, which describe how risk five vectors um, are going to change the world and kind of highlight some of our market leadership on risk five vectors. So that's, that's a really good resource to go and have a look at, actually. Nice. Is there... Uh like stage and a whole day there's been presentations around here so yeah we've been doing rolling presentations all uh, for the three days um, so there's been a, a, all of the kind of uh, the, 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 the people attending the risk 5 yeah. pavilion um, have been doing talks all week so I think they've actually recorded them all so they will be available um, on the risk 5 um, international website uh, risk5.org um, um, sometime soon so you'll be able to catch up on them also nice cool thanks Shabak. thanks a lot see you next time Bye -bye. Yeah. so sci-fi a big company i show you some secret a lot of people have a look around here we have danny he is the leader of france sci-fi he's super secret guy 
<laughs> and we also have Drew here, who is working on the software. So you see Sci-Fi for Big Team I doing a lot of software. stuff. I do hardware. Sorry, uh, hardware. Yeah. He is the best guy in hardware at Sci-Fi. Let's have a look on the next one. That is Codeplay. Codeplay is one of the partners enabling software. Charles, what are you doing, guys? So we're Codeplay. We're a Scottish company. We're based uh, out of Edinburgh. We're sub 100 people, but we work on software very much opening up the ecosystem. We work with open standard software. So we try and avoid lock-in software, proprietary software that locks you into one specific supplier, just like uh, what we have here is uh, CUDA which locks you into NVIDIA and we accept just about all AI it starts off as development as, uh, within NVIDIA environment so what we do is we say look, you've got to go open standards that's the only way to get wider adoption get different uh, processes out there and so using another, using an open standard is this thing called Sickle. Now, Sickle is an open standard done by the same body as the, the do OpenCL and OpenGL. Uh, so Sickle is very close to CUDA, it's a C++ language. And you can get conversion tools that take you from CUDA straight across into Sickle. And then once you're in Sickle, that opens up all the platforms available to you. And using that, we've actually put Sickle, the open standard, in and uh, made that work back onto NVIDIA, but also it will work onto Intel, onto AMD, it will work on Imagination, ARM, Renesis, and more importantly here, we've got it working with the RISC-V vector extension, so that chip companies will do a chip using the RISC-V vector extension, and then they will have immediate access to the whole ecosystem that NVIDIA has managed to hold on to itself. So it opens up a great ecosystem for customers to get straight in there. Cool. Thanks a lot. All right. Good to meet you. All right. You're seeing that's all about the ecosystem, Charbox. We need to have the hardware. We need to have the software operating system. And we need to have a simulation to test it and bring it inside. Imperos, what are you doing with RISC-5? Hey. Hi. Hi. Uh, so please introduce yourself. So my name is Larry Lapidus and I'm with Empiris Software. Empiris Software builds models of the RISC-V processors. We build models that are functionally or instruction accurate, and we support the full RISC-V specification, including all the processor IP vendors, including people that are building their own RISC-V. And then, with these models, our users use them as a reference model for design verification, and then use the models for software development even before silicon is available. Cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Is it a good show for you? It's been a very good show for us. We like this show a lot uh, because there's a lot of different activity here, different users, especially on the system side. This is an embedded conference, and our users that are developing software for RISC-V or for other processor uh, architectures. That's why they come here, and we can help them. Cool. Awesome. That Thank was a nice much. tour. So you're seeing the RISC-V is growing. Not all of the vendors are here. We're coming actually back to Andes, but I think it would be cool maybe to walk inside. You see all the logos here, but you have actually, to Actually, I have like one comment that says, RISC-V rocks. It, Expressive Systems Hall 3A booths 125 uh, announces uh, RISC-V. Yes. Expressive. Where are they? We are super proud. Paul, oh, where is the logo from Expressive? That's a good question. <coughs> to find it. No, I'll try to catch them just after this you, tour. You should catch them. Come to me. Here is the logo. Yeah. So the Expressive people are here. That is Expressive. They do chips. You can make your Wi-Fi. It's super easy out of the box. You have been asking for Intel. We have Intel here as a premium partner. Premium partner. That means Intel is really going big on risk five. You see this premium partners here, Western Digital, Intel, Alibaba Cloud, Huawei, FutureWay. That is a lot of people really investing and putting a lot of resources into risk five. What do you think about it, Charbox? What do you think compared to two years ago? What is your feeling about risk five? And you interview a lot of people. Do you see it's taking over the world? It's very interesting to see so much activity and uh, so much action, such a cool action packed presentation. It's definitely, we love it. We're going all big on risk five. 
and next year when you come we will have an even bigger booth and you should come more early because we have so much to show in one year more it's amazing how the ecosystem is exploding cool awesome cool all right thanks a lot thanks man thanks